and, 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 and so we don't read a whole lot about it till six, six hundred years later. Six generations later. And everybody is in a different country, in a different setting, in a different time. But again, the battle is played out. The house of Saul. In the world of Esther and Mordecai. In the book of Esther, we read the battle all over again. And we have Agag. Haman the Agagite, the Amalekite that Saul didn't take care of six centuries ago. And the fight begins all over again. And it's a little teenage girl that is the great, 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 at least six. More than that because you don't live to be a hundred years old. I don't know how many great granddaughter she is of Saul. She is of the house of Kish. Mordecai is of the house of Kish. And the Bible makes it very clear that this time the fight has switched around. And it's not God telling Saul, you go destroy every Amalekite. This time... It's Haman the Agagite that is filthy rich. He was a multi, multi, multi trillionaire. If you read how many talents. I did a figure one time on the talents that he paid. The king for the right to commit genocide. He told King Ahasuerus. And if you read in this about all of this in history. King Ahasuerus was kind of insane anyway. Pray for Esther. Well, it's too late now. She's dead. But she's a little teenage girl when all of this is going down. And he wants to fight King Ahasuerus. And the Greek nations are getting stronger and stronger. And he needs money to protect his, his kingdom. And so this is very important to him. And so, y'all still with me? And so the Bible says... That Haman tells him, I'll pay you. It's like 10,000 talents of silver. It was a bunch of silver. I don't remember the exact number now. And so Ahasuerus signs the decree. And seals the fate of all of Saul's people. And his grandchildren. Because years ago. He did not do what God told him to do. And there's only one hope now. And the hope rests on a teenage girl named Esther. That's the only hope that these people have. They are in despair. Mordecai tears his clothes and puts sackcloth and ashes upon him. And he lays in the gate and makes Haman even angrier when he sees him. There and he is just he hates these people. It has been in his blood. I'm going to tell some of you that keep trying to make leagues with spirits and attitudes and worldliness in your life and you think they love you. They hate you. They want to take you out. They want to take your children out. They want to take your grandchildren out. These attitudes and these spirits uh, and these things of worldliness that you keep flirting with uh, they, don't only, they don't only want you sir. They want your children. They want your children so far from God they don't even know how to get back to God. They want their faith so shredded and so torn and so buried Oh God help me preach this tonight Just because you have the impression right now that sin is okay and you can get away with it. Judge nothing before the time. So here we go. The Bible says 
that Esther don't know what to do. This, can you imagine putting this kind of pressure on your granddaughter? Well, I just don't think I need to talk to my kids about their sexuality. I get uncomfortable. You better, mama. You better talk to your kids about sexuality. The pornographers aren't going to be uncomfortable to talk to your kids about their sexuality. The perverted, and, and, and let's put this in context. I don't think every teacher is perverted. But the perverted teachers are not going to be afraid to talk to your kids about their sexuality. You said, Brother Elder, why do you make a big deal out of it? Because that's how, uh, uh, what's the guy that wanted to curse them? I can't remember his name in the wilderness. Uh, Balaam. Balaam. Balaam could not curse God's people. But he said, I'll tell you how to get God to curse his own people. You just bring these sexual sins into their midst. And he said, you won't have to curse them, Balaam. God will curse them. If, if, you, if you have the impression that all of this stuff is just going to happen and, and God's not going to deal with it, brothers and sisters, you don't know history. I'm not even talking about the Bible now. I'm talking about history. I'm talking about how that God sent people into those. I, I was reading today. I was reading about Genghis Khan and how that he was so wicked. I'm, I'm going to preach a message I'm going to preach a message about more than conquerors. But he was so wicked and so perverted that they said that when Genghis... He, he actually ruled a bigger empire than any other empire in the world. It wasn't, it wasn't a long empire, but it was... It's, and the reason why it wasn't a long empire is because he died. He was in battle. He was 86 years old and he fell off his horse and died. And the other cons, they couldn't do what he did. And, and they say that 5 to 10% of the world was killed by the armies of Genghis Khan. Is that what we want for our kids? Do we want that kind of wickedness and that kind of perversion? And, and I can't even tell you what he did to his prisoners. It's too perverted. And, and that's a world without Christianity. That's a world without Jesus Christ. If you think I want my kids to feel like, get the impression that they don't have to believe in Jesus, I am desperately praying that my kids believe in Jesus. I am desperately praying that my grandchildren keep the faith. I am desperate. I am believing God that God will make a covenant with me like he made with Abraham. I am believing God that God will make a covenant with me like he made with David. I am believing God that if I do this right, if I obey him, and if I do his word, uh, he will fight for my family. I don't want to face this world. I'm not trying to be scary tonight. I, I'm going to end this on a good note because you always have to have a sermon that ends on a good note anymore. It's just the impression that we get anymore. When I was a kid, they just scared to be jeebers out of you and hoped you got to the altar and prayed through. Maybe we need some more of that kind of preaching in this day and age. Does anybody love the Word of God? And so here we are 600 years later because Saul did not do what God told him to do. And now this is not no little Amalekite servant. This ain't even the little Agag king. The Agag guy, his name was Agag. That pranced up to Samuel and made his little boast. This man has money. He has power. He has matured. I want to tell you something. I don't want, I don't want any kind of spiritual battle to take dominion and grow and mature in my life or in my family's life. I, I, I want an altar in my life. I want an altar where I keep going to that altar saying, Okay, God, I come against these spirits. I come against these spirits. I'm going to say it again. I don't 
I, I, think it's a, I, I think it's a travesty when people get the idea, well, as long as I live for Jesus, I'm okay. I don't care what happens to my kids. I don't care what happens to my grandkids. I'm not interested in living one generation for Jesus Christ and then the rest of the generations that God has given me goes back into bondage, goes back into darkness. I don't want to see boo-boo and sissy in the world that God delivered you from, Brother Abe. How can we fight together? How can we make up our mind that if God says, slay it, slay it, we slay it. We get it out of our house. We get it off of our bookshelves. We quit talking about how we miss it. I don't miss anything the world has to offer. I have no desire for anything that God set me free from. I got delivered from a lot of stuff, and I don't want to look back to any of it. Anytime there's a temptation, I'm going to run to this altar. And I'm going to say, okay, God, let's whoop it. Let's totally, utterly destroy it. I want the spirit of Esther. She was scared spitless. But I'm going to tell you something. She had courage. That little lady had courage. And she had good leadership in her life. Thank God for Mordecai. Mordecai, he was a son of Saul, but he had the courage that his grandfather lacked. Mordecai told her, Esther, you have to do something about it. You have to do something about it, Esther. Perhaps God has brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. Let's stand. Went a little too long tonight. And you know the story. You can go home and read it. The book of Esther never mentions the name of God one time. But the hand of God is all over that little lady. That little teenager that has to fight enemies that her grandfather wouldn't kill. That has to deal with things hundreds of years later in a strange land. Some of us sometimes, I feel like saying this in the Holy Ghost. We come up against spirits in our prayer life and we think, oh my God, what am I fighting? Perhaps it's something from way back that somebody didn't get victory over and God has chosen you and given you the power to take dominion over that. I just feel like telling somebody in the Holy Ghost tonight. You don't have to be afraid of that. Don't make leagues with it. Don't compromise with it. You just say, okay, God, you didn't bring me to this place to fight this battle without empowering me and giving me the anointing and the victory to win this fight. You've heard me tell the story. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. About a little young lady, probably a teenager. Incredible pressure upon her. Brothers and sisters, do you know what it's like to go through 120 states? It would be like them going through 120 states here in America. 50, it would be like them going through all 50 states in America. And killing off every Spanish person. Not only that. They are looking in your lineage. To see if somewhere. You may not look Spanish. But they will look and see if you have. A lineage of Spanish. It's the same thing that Hitler did. Go read the story of Hitler. This is what Agag is trying to do. To God's people. And you say, Brother Elder, that's horrible. That's what the devil is trying to do to the church right now. But you know what? Greater is he that's within us than he that's in the world. But I'll tell you this. We ain't going to win by making deals with Amalek. The way we're going to win is stay on our face. The way we're going to win is still love this truth. 
still love this message about Jesus being God. Still love this message about there only being one way to get to heaven. Woo! I think I got two people to baptize tomorrow night. I looked all over. I think I found a, I found a temporary baptistry, or, a, or a, 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 not a temporary baptistry, but a, uh, a uh, mobile baptistry. And uh, because I got a man tomorrow night, I think I'm supposed to baptize. Tomorrow afternoon, we're going to get him baptized as soon as we can because they're not giving him much time to live. And they, he's so hooked up to wiring and, and stuff that he's got to stay in the hospital room. So we're going to take a baptistry right in that room and we're going to baptize him in Jesus' name. What are you going to do with the water, brother? I don't know. I may just let it pour all over the floor. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. No, we'll figure it out. But I want to tell you, that's how committed. Somebody, somebody asked me today, does, do they have to be immersed in the name of Jesus? Well, of course they do. We don't have the authority to change the Word of God. And if we'll do this God's way, He will conquer the enemy. Esther, who knows if God has not brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. How many of you think that if we'll do this God's way, that we will win the victory? I'm not going to get the impression that I can get away with sin. I'm going to get the impression that I can have victory right now. I'm going to get the impression that if I do this God's way, He'll make a way where there is no way. I'm going to get the impression uh, that if God be for me, then who can be against us? Uh, I'm going to get the impression that we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Esther, I don't know what to tell you. So she says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast three days. And she fasts three days. She comes to the king. And you know the story. In a foreign land with thousands of people against her. With all the news pundits talking about how those people are fixing to be destroyed in a few days. And every news outlet is against them. And every news outlet is controlled by Haman. And Haman's got the money to control everything. But I'll tell you what Haman don't control. He doesn't control God's favor. He doesn't control who God loves and who God will protect. He doesn't control the hand of God. And you know the story. The Bible says that that night, that fateful night that he comes in and all of his bodaciousness and all of his braggadociousness and all of his arrogance and hubris and he is eating with the king and the queen and she talks about how that somebody has come to destroy her people and the king is so furious he said who would have the audacity to do this and that that little girl that was probably scared spitless didn't know what was going to happen he was so powerful he had so much money he had so many allies she saw the workings of politics and how he had manipulated to even get this law and she is scared she don't know what's going on but that little teenage girl looks at him and says this is the man that signed that into law and she had the courage to look at that enemy and say you are the guy and with my last breath you are coming down you may have more money than I do you may have more prestige than I do you may have more news outlets than I do you may have everything else that I don't have but I'll tell you what I do have I have the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I have the favor of God who is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords and you know the story Bible says that God made a way for his people to fight off the enemy and win the victory but all of that would have never happened if her granddaddy would have said okay God I don't care what the people say I don't care what all my friends say I'm going to be who you called me to be can we lift our hands and worship him right now can we love him Hallelujah. I know I went a little over time tonight. Please forgive me, but but I tell you, I see a lot of people that are buying into the lie that they can go back to the world that God delivered them from. 
Some of them have bought into the lie so much. They're saying that God approves that. He'll let it be a part of his church and a part of his kingdom. I don't want that, God. I don't want that in my life. In the name of Jesus. Tuesday night, God. On a Tuesday night. On a Tuesday night, God. Tired body, because I've been working hard all day. On a Tuesday night. I'm making it a part of my code of honor. That I realize the only way to be saved is I got to go through Jesus Christ to be saved. I've got to repent of my sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. i got to have the Holy Ghost to fight these spirits, God. In the name of Jesus, that old spirit in this city, oh God, that's tried to teach people they don't have to have the Holy Ghost to be saved, God. Try to redefine how you get the Holy Ghost. I pray again, God, that you bring that spirit down. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray for young men and young ladies to get a passion in their life for this gospel. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for people in this church that have family members that are getting the impression it's okay, God. I pray, oh God, that they would hold the line. The only way to save your family is hold the line, brother. The only way to save your family is hold the line, sister. In the name of Jesus. 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 That's it. That's it tonight, God. not compromising God with Hollywood I don't want it in my family I don't want it in my children God I don't want it in my grandchildren we see the true spirit there God they try to tear down everything that is godly oh God God move on some of these converts to get the television out of their house God Get it out of their house. Get it off of their phones. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, brother. Come on, sister. Let the Holy Ghost talk to you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God help us to war a good war against compromise in our life. It comes to us every so often, but oh God help us to war against it. Come on, brothers and sisters, let's pray. 
Tonight's a night to fortify ourselves in the Holy Ghost. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 